What do you think of when you think of the United States Postal Service? Exactly. That's what pushes us to deliver smarter. Simpler. Faster. Sleeker. Earlier. Fresher. Harder. Farther. Quicker. And yeah, even on Sundays. Now, the rain, nor snow, nor sleet, nor hail, or losing several billion dollars at the drop of a hat will deter your postal service from delivering the mail, or at least trying to ensure it shows up without being drop kicked onto your lawn. Hey, come on, let's be fair. Plenty of good people work for the Postal Service and do their jobs well every day, which might be the news flash were it not for the ham-handed and bloated governmental leadership that is about to waste even more of your tax dollars. Let's get to it. Our guest is president of the Taxpayer Protection Alliance, David Williams, on Midpoint. David, thanks for joining us because we have to start figuring out why the American taxpayers need to spend over $6 billion to overhaul a delivery fleet for the United States Postal Service, which to many people doesn't seem to get the job done in the first place. Well, that, that's a great question because right now the Postal Service is hugely in debt. We're talking tens of billions of dollars, and now they want to buy $6 billion worth of new trucks. And the reason why they're doing this is not to deliver mail more efficiently, but to deliver packages, to deliver groceries, because they want to get involved in these other businesses that they're losing money at, but they think is the future of the Postal Service. The future of the Postal Service really is getting smaller and not getting bigger. So they really should learn their lesson from this, not buy $6 billion worth of trucks, and really figure out how to make the Postal Service a better entity. Okay, I'll play devil's advocate here for a minute because you have all these possibilities of delivery, you have all these different things they're looking to deliver now, and they don't do as much mail anymore. So if they don't do all of these things, then the Postal Service will implode even further, people will be out of work, jobs will be gone, uh, all that money will be wasted. So is it maybe just the point to say, we have to do something, and if we don't do this, then we may as well completely shut the doors? Well, the opposite is happening because first class mail, they've had, they've actually done some things to make first class ma mail actually make money. I hate to use the term make money when you talk about a government entity, but <laughs> they're turning first class mail around, but they're ruining it with this package delivery. So the package delivery is not the future of, of the post office. The future of the post office is about reform. It's about not delivering mail on Saturday. It's about closing offices. So it's not expansion. It's actually contraction. How long would it take, though? What's the, get the best guess? If the Postal Service was able to do some of the things that you just talked about, stop some of the bleeding here, and be able to make it an efficient service, whichever way you wanted to go. Are we talking uh, a year, five years, ten years, uh, somewhere into the 33rd century? <laughs> well, I think it's going to happen in my lifetime, and I'm not that young. So I think that if you, if you look at Saturday delivery, this is a huge number. If they got rid of Saturday delivery, they would save $2 billion a year. That's just one move. So get rid of Saturday delivery. And here's a secret that not a lot of people know is that the Postal Service has actually requested not to deliver on Saturdays, but Congress, Congress is standing in the way of that reform. And then you talk about closing unneeded uh, post offices. I mean, there are a lot of post offices around this country that are just one person and they really don't do a lot because there's not a lot of business. So I think we're in the five to 10 year range when you look at the Postal Service really being able to climb out from under this as long as they don't get involved in this package delivery, uh, you know, the grocery delivery and banking. They want to get into banking now. So, Well, that was we another thing I was going to ask you about here. I got about a minute left and people are saying that a big idea is to turn it into a bank where they're talking about the possibility of raising or raking in up to nine billion in annual revenue. Now, are they just basically blowing smoke when they say nine billion if you turn us into a bank. Well, when has a government number ever been accurate? I mean, Very let's true. be honest. I mean, you know, government estimates are always way off. And it just doesn't make sense because think about this. Do you want your bank to act like the DMV? And that's what's going to happen if the Postal Service gets a, a hold of banking. And it should be in the hands of the private sector. Banking should be in the hands of the private sector, not a government agency, not a quasi-government agency, smack dab in the private sector. I know that the Elizabeth Warrens of the world want banking to be in the Postal Service, but they haven't really figured out how to, to use the money they borrowed from the taxpayer wisely yet, so why 
put them in banking. Just to be very clear here, we're not talking about complete banking. We're talking about check cashing, prepaid debit right. cards, and small loans, which is not that big a deal, uh, at, at least in the overall scheme of things. 20 and seconds sure. Twenty seconds left then. Is it possible to save the Postal Service? It absolutely is possible to save the Postal Service. During Christmas, they deliver mail seven days a week. You don't need to get Christmas cards on Sunday. You can wait until Monday to get that Christmas card, to get that package. So Congress and the Postal Service need to work together, and I think it can happen. I really do, because they're coming out from this mountain of debt. So there's, there, there is a possibility that this can happen. I'm optimistic. And I got a great idea. Instead of new vehicles, horses. Oh, that's right. We tried that a long time ago. I don't know if that would exactly. still work in these days. David, a pleasure. Thanks for joining us. Have a great weekend. Thank you. You too. All right. When we come back, the bag, the political punching bag featuring Chris Christie and more.